may have noticed my absence of light. Uh, I happen to have broken a rib about a month ago now, pretty much as soon as I finished off the desks. So unfortunately I haven't really been able to do anything. Uh, at the moment I can use machines, but power tools are still a bit dicey because I still have to lift them up and control them that way. So in this video I'm going to do something relatively simple, um, which is making a wooden nut and bolt. I've showed how to make dowels before. This is going to be a different method from last time, but the process is fairly similar. You need to start off with square stock. So joint one side, one face. Then rip it to close dimensions, then take it to the thickness to get very exact dimensions. In the past I've shown you how to use a router table to get uh, fairly exact sized dowels and that works really well for smaller dowels. I found for the larger ones the uh, room for error sort of increases with my drill bits and there's a lot of material to remove that way. So in this case I'm going to use a roundover bit to give me a dowel. So this is off, come the other way obviously. Do one side, turn it and keep going until you're all the way around. This is a three quarter inch roundover or 19.01 millimeters, which will net me the, sorry, 19.05 millimeters, which will net me a 38 millimeter dowel, 38.1 or one and a half inch, which is what my threading jig requires. So the process is to leave square blocks on either end. So they've got somewhere for my push blocks to go because that is a terrifying bit. It is running at uh, speed two on this router though, Speed one would also be good. You don't want to run this at full speed because it's just big and scary. Leaves a really nice finish and that's probably the biggest difference over the other method is that the finish on this is very, very smooth even in pine. In hardwood it was just as good if not better. If you're going to make a lot of dowels for threading for whatever purpose, uh, typically they're going to be a similar sort of length uh, and you'd be best sort of making a jig that standardizes the size. So say I wanted whatever length this is, I think it's about 200 millimeters. Uh, I would then make a jig that accepts a square blank that is a little bit longer than that. So maybe 25, 50 millimeters on either end. Then toggle clamps will go on those square sections and you'll just round over the middle section. Um, that would be much easier than doing with the push blocks uh, just because the whole thing is going to be grounded all at once and I'll maybe show in another episode how I do that. This is the Beale Big Threader Jig. It comes in multiple sizes, mostly just the insert there, and it accepts a trim router.
So the cap piece just fits snugly on the dowel. Uh, you could glue that on if you're wanting to make it more permanent. Uh, and that's just a friction fit with a 38 millimeter force in a bit. It's quite a good fit. And the nut I've just rounded over the corners a little bit. Probably do that a better job of that. I'd recommend uh, threading that before cutting it at the bandsaw, but I got a bit excited because everything was turning out quite well. So you might be wondering, what could I possibly want a wooden thread for? Well, they are neat decorations, uh, fidget type things for a desk. You can make vices for it. This vice I made last year with this same jig, I just never really explained how I went about doing it. Now that I've got a consistent way for making the dowels, I've got a few projects in mind. Uh, one, for one, I want to be making a couple of these uh, wood screw vices as a kit to sell for people if they don't want to go and buy the threading jig. But I do have a couple of other vices I want to make. First off, I want to make a tail vise, which will actually be a face vise that I'll just mount on the tail of my workbench. I really like the H&T Gordon tail vise I have, but occasionally I want more your traditional face vise so I'll put that on the back slab. I also want to make a leg vise for this workbench. And eventually I want to make an adjustable stool for in the workshop. And the threaded jig actually comes with instructions on how to make that. I just haven't got around to it. So the plan is that I'll make tail vise next week, and then the leg vise. And that's sort of in line with how my ribs are healing up. I shouldn't need to use power tools. I should be able to get away with just just machines to make the tail vise, then the th leg vise will need some power tools or just lifting the heavier leg chop. My ribs should be up for that and then the bar stool, adjustable stool, I will need to use the lathe for parts of that and that will require my ribs being in better condition. So I'm sort of playing a lot by ear for now. Hopefully that all made sense. Thanks for watching.